Finding the volume of a region when it's bounded by uh, several different functions using the shell method can be a pretty tricky process. So I've decided to go with another example on how to do this. In this one, we want to find the volume of the region that's bounded by the following curves, y equals x minus x squared and y equals zero. What's special about this example is we will rotate it about the line x equals two, so not one of our axes. As you'll see a little bit later on, this will have a, a huge impact on how we set up our radius. Let's first draw a picture of this thing just so we have an idea of how everything is orientated. So first I want to get a good idea of my bounding functions. So this guy says y equals x minus x squared. So I can see that that's a parabola because of my x squared and it's facing down because of the negative sign out front. If I factor out an x from both of the terms, then I'll know exactly where it crosses the x-axis. So it looks like it crosses when x equals 0, and again when x equals 1. So I'll put a spot there, and a spot there for x equals 0 and 1. So uh, a little segment of our parabola, something like that. Right, the other bounding curve in this is y equals 0. So you can imagine a nice horizontal line right at y equals 0. I'll just draw a portion of that. Now we can see that this it bounds that little region right in there, this little curved guy. So let's go ahead and shade it in. So this is what we'll be rotating. Now we're going to rotate this about the line x equals 2. So if this guy's 1, 2 is probably, mm, let's say right about there. Alright, so what we want to understand from this is what shape the cylindrical shells will take. What we can imagine is, you know, there's some arbitrary uh, shell here, and it gets rotated about this axis, and it looks something like this. So the radius is emanating out from that too, and the height of all these shells will really be determined by our function. All right. So now we have a good idea of what the radius is doing, what the height is. Let's go ahead and set up our integral. So the general form for these things look like the integral a to b, 2 pi, times the radius, times the height. All right. If we look at that diagram one more time, we can get all of these pieces. So first of all, these bounds from 0 to 1 will go in for our A and for our B. The radius is emanating out from 2. Now that's really important. Look at what happens when I'm at x equals 0. My radius is not necessarily 0, it's actually 2 at that point. As I creep in closer with different x values, my radius decreases, but it is some distance away from 2. This means the thing that I'll set up for my radius is actually 2 minus whatever x value I'm at. It's even true when I get to the very inside of this. So here when I'm at x equals 1, I can see that the radius is simply 1, which, you know, makes sense. 2 minus 1, we're at 1. Let's put in those pieces. So this will become the integral from 0 to 1, 2 pi, here's that radius part, 2 minus our x value. And now the height, x minus an x squared dx. All right, we have our integral. Let's just go ahead and compute it now. Start off by kicking out any constants you might have. And it looks like we're going to have to foil this out. So 2 times x, 2x. Outside terms, minus 2x squared. 
inside terms minus x squared and last terms plus an x cubed dx. So let's see. We've got our 2 pi out front. 0 to 1. 2x. This would be a minus 3x squared plus x cubed dx. All right. Looks like now we're ready to take the antiderivative. So let's start with this and do just that. So for our antiderivative, we'll add 1 to the powers of these and divide by that new power. So adding 1, this will give us an x squared. 2 divided by the new 2 will be just 1, so no need to write a coefficient. Add 1 to this power will become x cubed. Divide 3 by a 3, that's a 1. Again, no need to write that one. Plus x to the 4th. Divide by 1 fourth. From 0 to 1. Alright, looks good. Now we can plug in our top bound and our bottom bound. See what this turns out to be. Starting off with the top, let's see. 1 squared minus... 1 cubed plus 1 quarter, 1 to the 4th. Okay, so there's our top bound, minus what happens when we plug in 0. Well, since all of these contain an x, we'll just subtract 0. All right, I like to see all of those 1s. This will make it nice and easy to, easy to simplify. So 1 minus 1, that'll be 0. Then I have 1 fourth times 1 to the fourth. 1 to the fourth is 1, so we'll just have 1 quarter. All right, I'm liking this. So this is simply 2 pi, all divided by 4, or pi divided by 2. So as you can see, it makes a difference what the radius is if we decide to rotate around another point other than one of our axes. Once you go from there and you got it all set up, the integration is fairly automatic and you should be good to go. So pi over 2 is the volume of our region.